Greetings, dear friends. What a joy. As Peter says, I think, it is joy unspeakable and full of glory. I've always understood the word glory to be used most times in the Bible to define something God is doing in his eternal plan. Always there was glory about when God was doing his eternal thing. We have a lot to talk about today, and I hope that you have a Bible handy because I'm going to go through some verses that will really help those of you that want to go on in the fullness of Christ. Now, some people don't want to do much about the fullness of Christ. They've already gotten involved in something else, and that suits them just fine. But the hungry believer will want more and more of Christ because Christ has been given to you as a gift of God to be your very life. And so you want your life to be full of the glory of God, His eternal plan in operation. If you will, I want you to turn in your Bible to Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. And I want to take a good, good look at some of the verses here that will help you in your understanding of who you are in Christ. Verse 20 begins by saying, But we have not so learned Christ. He's made a contrast in some of the previous verses of people who have not moved on in the things of Christ. They've not become a Christian, a Christ person. And so he says here the problem is that they have not learned Christ. Notice he didn't say they weren't saved. He didn't say they're not going to go to heaven. He didn't say they were not God's children in what sense they know to be that. But what he said was very plainly, they haven't learned Christ. And when it's put that way, it means something strategic to us. For instance, when you say you have not learned Christ, you are not saying I have not learned about Christ. Learning about Christ and learning Christ are two different things. When you learn Christ, you're learning at something that's in hand, something that is close to you, or something that is in you. Well, the fact is, ever since a believer has been saved, he has been in Christ, and Christ has lived in him. Now, the Bible, as I've said in other broadcasts, is very explicit about you being in Christ. Over 146 times Paul uses the statement alone in Christ or in him or in whom, some prepositional phrase like that. And there are over 220 times it's used in the New Testament. So that's a well-stated fact. Most people have ignored that fact. Most people don't teach much about believers living in Christ. That would sort of tear up the doctrine and tear up the de denominational program. It would sort of tear them up because they've been for so many years getting roped in and tied in to what it was they ought to believe. But they already had Christ in them. Christ is a gift from God in salvation. In fact, Christ is salvation. He doesn't give salvation. He is salvation. And when you get a hold of that, as the scriptures plainly define and give you the answer, you're going to find out things about yourself that are most important. Things that you long for, things that you want, will begin to take place in your life as never before because you will have become a full Christian. Joining the church doesn't make you a Christian. Paying money to the church doesn't make you a Christian. A Christian is one in whom Christ lives. Well, this 20th verse of this fourth chapter says to the people in Ephesus that you have not learned this Christ. So what Christ are they talking about? They're not talking about Jesus of Nazareth. That's something you can get from anybody in that day that has followed Christ or been where Jesus was. They all have some sort of an idea about Jesus of Nazareth. But the Jesus he's talking about is the Christ that lives in them. You haven't learned about him. You haven't given yourself to him. You haven't made a place for him in your life as you. That's the difference. 
So many believers have made a place for Christ in their works, in their duties, in their service, but they have never made a place for Christ as them. Now, what do I mean by that statement? I mean that Christ can only come out of a believer as they are. I don't care whether the believer is dumb, ignorant, or intellectual, professional, or whatever. Christ can only come out of them as they are. So what is it they have to learn? They have to learn themselves how to manifest and give this Christ to hungry hearts. Give this Christ to others. But most of all, allow Him to become them as their very life. Paul would put it this way, the life I now live is Christ. He would say there is now no condemnation to those that are in Christ. So the Christian walk doesn't start with duties. It doesn't start with service. It doesn't start with you getting busy for the Lord. The Christian life begins with your learning. you got to learn something. you got to know something. You have to apply yourself to the Scriptures. And you have to listen to the Holy Spirit. I'm going to be talking a lot about what ought to take place before I get to the Holy Spirit. Because when I get to Him, that's going to really level out. Level out your knowledge and your understanding and what you're doing for God. Because the Holy Spirit is nothing to take lightly. He is no one to take lightly. And so the first thing, Paul says to these people in Ephesus to get them straightened out where they're contrasting themselves with other people is to say, you still haven't learned Christ. You've not so learned Christ. That means Christ in hand. That means Christ in you. That means the Christ that you were baptized into. Into Christ. You're in Him, and He's in you, but you haven't learned that yet. That's the very essence of what I have to talk about on this program. So many people say, well, why don't you talk about something else? Why don't you tell us about the end of the world? Why don't you tell us about the problems in the world? Why don't you tell us how we can get answers to our prayer and get faith? Dear friend, if you knew Christ lived in you, if you had learned this Christ that lived in you, you would not be asking questions. Is that plain enough? So what am I talking about? I'm talking about a whole new understanding of Jesus Christ. If the Bible were not filled with this understanding, especially in Paul's message, I would be a little out of bounds. But I'm not out of bounds talking about the one most important thing God has done. He has rebirthed human beings on this earth by placing another life in them. That life is the Christ life. The Christ life. That's what he's placed in you. He didn't place a better life in you. He didn't place a smarter life in you. He didn't place an overcoming life in you. He placed the overcomer in you. He placed the only life that pleases Him in you. Christ in you. Your hope of glory. So, I have to talk about these things or I'd be failing God. I have an audience here. This audience that picks up anything on our webpage is going to hear this message. That's my calling. That's why I preach and teach. Is because my world, I live in here, this old earthly world, does not know about the Christ that lives in them. They know it outwardly when they get happy. Oh, that's the Lord that lives in me. But that's not knowing Him. They have an idea that very often preachers talk about Christ living in them, but they have no explanation of how that happened. So the only people that have Christ living in them are the ones that got the God seed. The God seed, not the corruptible seed, but the God seed was placed in them, and that constituted another life. I'm talking about that life of Christ. I'm not talking about what Jesus of Nazareth did. He did wonderful things. Thank God he did. We get a lot of help there. 
But I'm not talking about Jesus of Nazareth. I'm not talking about the Lord that was prophesied for over 4,000 years in the Old Testament. I'm talking about what happened to you when you got saved. I'm talking to you about what God did to you when you got saved. And so many people have never heard those words before. They've never heard anybody talk about such things as I mentioned now. If I didn't have this book before me, if I wasn't telling you what was in this book, if I was not preaching the final gospel in this book for the born again, I'd be out of order. But I tell you what I'm doing. I'm talking to you about the Christ that lives in you. He is the one you need to learn about. How do you learn the Christ that lives in you? How do you know about the Christ that lives in you? It's very simple. If you died with Christ on the cross, you don't have an old life anymore. As I'm always saying, study Romans 6. It'll clear that up for you. You don't have an old life anymore. Galatians 2.20 begins with the words, I am crucified with Christ. That means that Christ is not the only one that died on that cross. Your old life died on that cross. Your old way of doing things died on that cross. And as the scripture, 2 Corinthians 5 and 17 would say, that Christ has caused you to be a new creature. Therefore, if any man be what? In Christ. He is a new creature. A new creature. It's so easy to find people today that are not new creatures who claim Christianity. So easily. I just read a newspaper here the other day of a church across America that was having an awful lot of trouble. They were fussing with each other and uh, they were getting desperate to get their position understood. What is it they don't know? They don't know the Christ that's in them. The Christ that's in them. We have a couple of our brethren that uh, have been Christian preachers but have uh, sort of forsaken the gospel for a period of time and are talking about having a new church called Chrislam. Chrislam. Joining together with the Mohammedans and Christians and making one group. Let me tell you something. They've never learned about the Christ that's in them. God put His Son in us. Christ lives in us. He doesn't need some other religion, some other gospel to bring forth that Christ. He's written it all here. Paul is distinct. Paul is clear. He says it exactly like it ought to be said. The reason why some people don't preach Paul is because they don't like him. They think there's something wrong with him. But he had to grow up in the most awesome truth that God ever gave a human being. For one day in an Arabian desert, God called him. God called him to this gospel by saying, Christ lives in you. Now that's the Christ you really need to know and understand, and until we come to that point to where we do understand Him, we're not alive. The life is in the Son. The life is in the Son. So you see these few words in this 20th verse are very powerful, very outstanding. And I'm going to stick with this 20th verse for a little while until I get things out of my mind that the Spirit has put there that need to be said. I am called by God to tell you about the Christ that lives in you. No preacher has any more Christ in him than the most humble believer. No great man of God had more Christ in them than anybody listening to me today. What did they know? They knew something about this Christ. They had learned Christ. That's what hasn't been taught my generation, and that's why I'm on the air, to teach you and preach to you the glory of this new life, new creature life in Christ. I'm so glad you tuned in to me today. I know some of you, when you look at me, wonder about me. If you look 
closely, you'll see that I've got a couple of scars on my forehead here, and that's because a couple of Christmases ago, I was walking down the steps in my basement, and I tripped, and I fell backwards, and I hit my head hard on concrete and on a post. And so they had to do some operating on me to clear it all up. And it is cleared all up. But the one thing I learned in it, I do have a brain. I never knew that before, really. But I know now I have a brain. I'm trying to fill my brain with the glory of God, the eternal plan of God. And I'm glad you tuned in and listened to me. I'm at this same spot every day with a different message just for you. A different message just for you. And I hope that you get a hold of it. Have your Bible handy. We'll come back to this 20th verse on tomorrow's broadcast. God love you till we meet again.